We welcome everyone to the Trailblazers practice facility in Portland, Oregon for the third of five 2016 Kia NBA Performance Awards. Hello everyone, I'm Mike Barrett, TV voice of the Trailblazers. Today we celebrate the announcement of the NBA Kia Most Improved Player. The award handed out to an up and coming player who has displayed a dramatic improvement from the previous season or seasons. Kia Motors is the official automotive partner of the NBA and the proud sponsor of these Kia NBA Performance Awards. And today, parked right outdoors, although it's a little wet, is a very sleek, very stylish, brand new Kia Sorento. Each winner of these prestigious on-court honors gets to donate a vehicle just like the one outside to the charity of his choice. We'll learn ver a lot more about this very special program and the exceptional nine-year partnership between Kia Motors and the NBA from the first of our special guests. He is the Kia's retail marketing manager for the Western region, Will James. Next to Will, we have the head coach of the Trail Blazers who has led his team to the NBA playoffs the last three seasons, Terry Stotts. Our next guest was hired by Portland in June of 2012 and is the architect of today's exciting young Blazers squad. Please welcome president of basketball operations, Neil Olshea. And now the man of the hour. He scored in double figures in an impressive 79 of the 80 games he played this season. In 40 of those games, he tallied 20 points or more, and eight times he poured in at least 30. But here's the real reason he is being honored today. His average of 20.8 points per game is 14 points more than last season. And that is the largest increase from one year to the next in the last 27 years. Please welcome your 2015-16 Kia NBA Most Improved Player, C.J. McCollum. <laughs> C.J.'s remarks will come uh, in a few moments, but first we get to hear from the man who can probably speak more to the improvement of C.J. McCollum than anyone else. Welcome Trailblazers head coach Terry Stotts. First off, CJ, congratulations. Um, you know, this is a very deserving award for, for CJ in that, uh, you know, it's a culmination of a lot of work. And, uh, you know, he's battled through some injuries, not only uh, his first two years in the NBA, but his senior year in college. But uh, he, he took everything in stride and continued to work. And especially this summer, knowing uh, the roster was going to be the way it was, that he prepared himself to have the year that he had. And, uh, certainly, he was talented before this year, but the work that he put in and the fact that he was ready to take advantage of the opportunity speaks to uh, the, the work ethic that he has and the character that he has. So I'm very, very proud to have him on our team. I'm very proud of his accomplishments. And you may have scored in double figures 80 games if I hadn't screwed up on the roster thing. <laughs> so sorry about that. But anyway, congratulations, CJ. Uh, very deserving and very proud. Thanks, Coach. Now let's hear from the man who grabbed CJ with a 10th pick from the 2013 NBA draft and then was quoted as saying, we got the guy we wanted and the guy we didn't think we could get, and added that he is the entire package and how right he was. Blazers president of basketball operations, Neil O'Shea. He is the whole package. Um, you know, in a town like Portland, uh, as Dame knows, and his teammates that are sitting here, it's so important that the players on this roster become a part of the fabric of the community of Portland, Oregon. The way the team embraces our players and our organization, how emblematic of the way we comport ourselves is for everybody that attends Blazer games, whether it's in person, whether it's with our broadcast partners. It's really important to all of us that we have guys that they, that illustrate the right values, and CJ clearly does that. Um, I, put a, I put an inordinate amount of pressure on Dame and CJ this offseason. We decided to go in another direction. We decided to get guys in the same career arc as Dame and CJ. Um, as much pressure as we put on Dame, we put even more at times on CJ because we knew for us to be successful this season, it was imperative that CJ make the jump we knew he was capable of. Um, I, the, the amount of credit 
that goes to CJ is supported by the amount of credit to the coaching staff. David Vanterpool, Nate Tivitz, Dale Osborne, Jay Triano, Jimmy Moran, and of course Terry, that just spent countless hours getting extra reps up, extra shots, watching film, getting him to be the player we all knew he was capable of three years ago when we took him with the 10th pick in the draft. So nobody in this, nobody in this room is more deserving or has put more work in to reach this point in his career. And I can tell you, watching this guy in the gym, watching how he relates to the coaches, handles himself on the floor, this isn't the last award he's going to get from the NBA during his long career. So again, congratulations to CJ. We as an organization and as a city are very lucky to have CJ in this family. Thank you. Thanks, Neil. And now with a pair of special presentations to make here is Will James from Kia Motors America. Good morning. My name is Will James. I'm the Western Region Regional Marketing Manager for Kia Motors America. This is a very exciting day in the NBA. And it's also a very exciting time for Kia as we continue to accelerate our growth in the U.S. and globally. Over the last 20 years, and since Kia entered the U.S. market, Kia has experienced the largest sales increase of any auto brand, thanks in part to our tremendous partnership with the NBA. Kia has proudly served as the league's official automotive partner for nine seasons and is also a proud partner of the Portland Trailblazers. And during that time, we've transformed the brand into a recognized leader in design, quality, technology, and value. Today, Kia is one of the auto industry's greatest success stories, delivering world-class vehicles in every segment we compete in, from subcompact to luxury to even electric. And we're just getting started. And just as we seek excellence and achievement on the road, the Kia NBA Performance Awards celebrates the league's top performers on the court, including the most valuable player, six man, defensive player of the year, rookie of the year, and the reason we're here today, Kia most improved player. As true fans of basketball and the NBA, and on behalf of Kia team members and retailers nationwide, it's my true honor to present C.J. McCollum of the Portland Trail Blazers with the 2015-16 Kia NBA Most Improved Award. Congratulations, C.J. And as part of this prestigious award, it's my delight to donate a vehicle, a 2016 Kia Sorento, on CJ's behalf to the Boys and Girls Club of Portland. Good. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Will. And thanks to Kia. And now let's hear from this amazingly talented player who Set career highs in points, assists, rebounds, field goal, three-point percentage as well. He joins the late Kevin Duckworth and Zach Randolph as the only trailblazers to win this coveted award. Ladies and gentlemen, C.J. McCollum. I'll try to make this as short as Neil and Coach Terry did. <laughs> First and foremost, I want to thank my teammates for coming out. I appreciate you guys. I really want to thank the big fellas for setting all those screens this season, for all the dribble handoffs, the pin downs, the flares, and the sacrifices you guys make on a day-to-day -day basis. Mason's not in here, so I want to shout you out, too. I don't see you in here, but it's okay. I appreciate you. Um, I want to thank the organization. I want to thank Coach Terry. I want to thank Neil, Mr. Allen, for uh, drafting me, for trusting me, uh, giving me the opportunity to, uh, to perform at this level. Uh, I know I went through some injuries early on. You guys might have been nervous, like, man, we, hopefully he can get over these injuries. <laughs> but I appreciate you guys taking the time, uh, being patient with me. I know being a journalism major, I can give the coaching staff a hard time at times arguing with you guys about, you know, different plays, different workouts that I may or may not feel are in my better interest. So thank you guys for that as well. Nate, I know we spent a lot of time together um, my rookie year taking cabs over at 3.30. 
and me kind of telling you, you know, hey, I don't know if I'm gonna play tonight, so let's get some extra, <laughs> some extra ones in, and just to see how far I've come as an individual, it's, it's been a, a great ride. Uh, DV, all the talks we have, you know, on the road, you know, eating, eating out with Dame, and just kind of, you know, talking about our plans as individuals, not only on the court but off the court, off the court on how to build our brand and how to kind of elevate our games to the next level and just be, you know, good people. So I appreciate you, all the defensive slides you made me do this summer. Um, at times they pay off, at times they don't. But uh, I feel like we're heading the right direction. And uh, the 900 threes, man, I think we got about 900 of yesterday. The way I've been shooting, you know, we, <laughs> we definitely need to do that. So thank you for that. And I want to thank uh, John Yim. I spent a lot of time with you watching film, um, sneaking in the gym late at night, you know, trying to get some serenity and peace and finding you in here. You know, plugging away, you know, they, they work you hard and, you know, I'm most improved and you are the most improved video coordinator. So <laughs> I, I recognize and appreciate you and I salute you. <laughs> I want to thank uh, Coach Osborne. I want to thank Hawk. You know, I can always count on you to have a nice looking suit on. So I felt like, you know, putting this red blazer on it, you would appreciate that. And, you know, you, you the real MVP, man. You <laughs> no, all seriousness, no, I do appreciate you guys. Uh, I want to thank uh, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because I know without him, none of this would be possible. Uh, I pray for the opportunity to play, you know, early on in my career, understanding that, you know, it takes time to accomplish a lot of things and that you got to be patient. So I'm, I'm glad to see my patience finally paid off. I want to thank my mom, who's not here. Um, she's actually flying to Turkey uh, to see my brother play in his cup championship. He's actually got a game in about an hour and a half, so I was going to ask Coach if we can wrap practice up early today so, so I can watch my brother win his first cup championship after he was named cup MVP and a league MVP. So uh, I'm really, really proud of my mom for the man she raised and myself and my brother, understanding that um, you know, this world is cruel and it's tough, and you've got to be strong, you've got to be passionate about what you do, and you've got to be loyal. And that's kind of what she, she, she preached in us and what she instilled in us and understanding that there's going to be obstacles you face in life, whether that be injuries, whether that be, you know, not succeeding or having, you know, things not go right in your personal life with deaths in the family and things of that nature. So I just want to shout her out. And my dad, I appreciate you too. All the, all the talks you give me about, you know, being a man and understanding that you got to man up for your responsibilities. And I'll never forget the call you gave me when I was in college. Uh, called me, asked me what I was doing. I said, I'm about to go to a party with some of my friends. <laughs> and he was like, uh, you going to a party? He was like, life is much better when you're, when you, he said, you think those parties are fun right now? You know, you make it to the NBA and those parties will be a lot better. So you need to go to the gym. <laughs> and I, I was on the phone looking at my friends and I was like, hey, he's right. So I went to the gym first and then I went out with my friends for a little bit, but I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that because those are real words, man. He was, he was always the one to tell me, you know, you see Steph Curry's jumper? You got to get your jumper like that. Or you see how Dane finishes in the key? Your, your finishing is terrible. You need to work on your paint finishing, you know, develop a floater, use the backboard, all that stuff. So I appreciate you for that. And I can always count on my mom to give me a great liner when I, when I had a bad game. And I only scored in under double digits one time this year. She calls me and says, CJ, what's wrong? I was like, nothing's wrong, mom. I'm good. She's like, well, you told me to quit my job, and I've been working for 30 years, and I quit my job, but if you're going to play like that, <laughs> I, might need to, I might need to go back to work. <laughs> so as you guys understand, this is the type of family I have. They're always going to keep it real with me. They're going to tell me the truth. They're not going to boost my ego and, and fill me up with lies. So I appreciate you guys. My brother is about to win a championship right now. Uh, I've been very instrumental in my life, uh, helping me get to this point. All the workouts in the summertime, all the sacrifice. I remember I always wanted to play 33 and ones and ping pong and, and, and pool. And he'd be like, look, man, if you want to make it to the league, you got to get these shots up. We got to count these shots. You got to get pick and rolls, floaters, all that stuff. So we put so much time in watching Synergy and everything. I just want to shout him out. So I win the championship, bro. I want to thank my girlfriend for dealing with my bipolar ways. Uh, wins and losses, I know I can be, be a lot. So I appreciate you. And uh, I think I hit everybody. If I forgot, I'm sorry. Let me look around. AC, I shout you out, boy, because you always fresh and you clean. <laughs> and uh, I appreciate you, Mo. You the man, too. I can't forget my backcourt mate, Mr. Lillard. I appreciate you, bruh.
being a real one, man. We've been through a lot together, going through small schools and, and struggling. And uh, for us to, to succeed together means a lot to me because I can understand you, you can understand me. We both sacrifice, and when I get rolling, you let me go, and, and that's that's rare in a star player to let let somebody else get going, let them take shots that you could normally make, especially down the stretch in the game. So thank you for being a real one. Thank your family for taking me in and all those meals you know I like to eat, man. So I appreciate your pops making those meals for for your boy and your moms and everybody looking out. But man, we're gonna do a lot of special things together, man. We we're, we're gonna we're gonna break break a lot of barriers. So appreciate you, man. Small guard nation. We out here. <laughs> My Lehigh Valley people, I appreciate y'all. Uh, it, it's been it's been a whirlwind. Um, I, I've just enjoyed the process and and thankful and loyal to everybody. You know, being from being raised in Canton, Ohio, making it to this stage, it means a lot to me. So. Thank you guys. I want to thank the organization. I think I've talked enough. Appreciate everybody. God bless. Bless up. We're not done talking yet. <laughs> We're going to open it up to questions from the media after we uh, first get our Kia fan question from social media. Evan Wilson from Melbourne, Australia wants to know what's been the biggest thing you have worked on in your game on or off the court to become the Kia NBA most improved player? Uh, wow, that's a that's a really good question. I think the biggest the biggest thing is just understanding the game because I've always played the game, I've always watched film and kind of broken it down. But now I understand the game a little bit better and, and kind of seeing the game before it happens, seeing stuff, you know, in pick and roll situations, you know, guarding JJ these last couple games, understanding that you know DeAndre is coming with some moving screens at times, um, understanding that you got to be able to fight through those. You got to be able to get around those, and you know he's a guy that never stops. So just studying different parts of the game, and understanding you know what's going to occur. All right, we now open it up for questions from the uh, media. I know Brandon and Colin have microphones. Uh, if, raise your hand, state your name and affiliation, and ask your question. CJ, how much did that opening night against New Orleans sort of affirm everything you had worked for this summer when you had a career high first game of the season? I mean, that was that was big, not only for myself, but I think for for teammates, for the, for the staff and the organization to see that, you know, the hard work I put in in the summertime and, and behind closed doors is, is paying off. And now everybody's able to see it. Um, just it kind of reminded me of, of high school. You know, my freshman and sophomore year, I played J I played JV my freshman year. My brother was a starting point guard, and then my sophomore year, I was like the sixth man. I played like 18 minutes a game, averaged 6.8 points. So it was kind of similar to. You know, this year coming in, coming in from second to third year, and my first career start on varsity, I had 54 points. So I was telling my dad, like, you know, hopefully this is just like high school, and I can go out there and get 50 to start the season. But um, it, it was very comforting just to be able to play at home, uh, to get a lot of open shots early, uh, understanding that, you know, I got about 10 games until, you know, teams is going to stop letting me shoot open threes. So I wanted to kind of take advantage of those first 10 to 15 games, and it was good, good momentum. CJ, Jason Quick, Comcast Sports. Was there an evolution in how you perceived this award? Because I think initially <laughs> you were like, I've always been this good. Yeah, I mean, I think you caught me off guard. I might have been in a bad mood when you asked me that question. But I, I mean, that's just how I felt. Man, I, I felt like I've, I've been a good player. I just circumstances. I think there's a lot of good players in the NBA who are in, in a box. You know, they, maybe they got a lot of veterans in front of them. Maybe they hurt. Maybe the coach just don't like to play young players. So for me, it was injuries. It was being a lottery pick drafted to a 50-win team. That doesn't happen. So to have to go through that and have to kind of wait your turn, you get hungry. And I felt like I was a good player. I've gotten a lot better. I've gotten stronger. I understand the game better. But in my mind, I always thought I was a good player. So when you hear most improved, you think, like, he was sorry and he got better. That's kind of how I was looking at it. But now I understand that. You know, it comes from hard work. It's based on perception, not having played, not having a body of work to show for it. I'm thankful to receive the award. I understand that a lot of a lot of great players have received the Jimmy Butler being one of the most recent, Kevin Love, Zebo, Doug Worth, among many others. And uh, hopefully I can continue to trend upward like those guys did. CJ, at CaseyHoldOutTriplers.com. Um, obviously, you're a talented player. You, you've put in a lot of work. But how important has, has kind of your approach to to, I don't want to say proving people wrong, but just the idea of, of knowing you're better and maybe feeling like you're a bit undersold. How important has that been to, to your ability to, to come out and, and have such a great season and so far a great career? Um, it just, 
it means a lot to to struggle. I, I take pride in struggling and overcoming that. To go into a small school, being five two, 108 pounds, all the girls being taller than you. In high school, you you kind of have an appreciation for good things when they come your way. Understanding that um, you got to work, you got to work to to get success, and you got to judge a man by not how. Now, don't judge me after a 37 New Orleans. Judge me after a 3 for 11 in LA or a 6 for 17 in LA. Like judge me on how I respond to adversity because everybody good when when things is sweet and, and things is coming your way. But you know how do you respond to adversity? So I pride myself on being able to bounce back from things, and I look forward to continuing to not only just prove people wrong but solidify what I already know, so that I can play at this level and I can sustain you know a high level of excellence. CJ. We usually associate player development at the amateur level, maybe the D League. Um, what were some specific moments this season? It kind of let you know the process was working, and, and specifically, what were you doing? I think just you know over the course of the summer, I spent a lot of time with the strength and performance staff, with Ben Kenyon and Todd and uh, Stackpole, just understanding that I had to get my body right. Uh, they they said I was chubby. I was never chubby. I want to put that on the record. I was never chubby. Um, my body fat was like eight and some change. And they was upset about it. Now I'm at five and some change. So I think just kind of understanding that that part of things and, and what to eat and understanding that, you know, I, I got a little bit more money now so I can be more cognizant of what I'm putting in my body, take advantage of, you know, the chefs we have here and that stuff. That was the first thing, the hot yoga, all that stuff in the summertime. And, and all the leg lifts and, and lifting on game days and me telling BK, like, man, why are we lifting today, man? The, the, the fans are not going to see this. They're not going to understand that I'm sore from this, this front squats and I'm missing threes. So being able to kind of get past that and stop making excuses, I think that was the first step in the right direction for me. And I knew, like, once I stopped making excuses that I'd be able to, you know, play at this level and, and live with the results. CJ, even your first two years, you were so confident and so self-assured, even when you weren't playing. Uh, you're as confident a guy as, as I've run into. I wonder, where does that come from? I think it just comes from preparation, understanding that I, I prepare a lot harder than a lot of guys. I watch a lot of a lot of video, I understand the game. I put a lot of time into it and devote myself to it. And it's in my family, it's in my blood. And uh, just my mom just always raising me to, to be confident. And if you don't believe in yourself, who gonna believe in you? You know, if, I, if I'm out there looking looking unsure and you know I'm supposed to be a confident person who's going to follow my lead you know so just understanding that and then just even when I didn't believe it I believed it you know I psyched myself out like man I'm gonna be a star five foot two five foot seven playing JV I'm gonna be I'm gonna be in the NBA and people will be like you crazy <laughs> you're five seven like <laughs> you don't even play varsity Uh, Craig Burnback, uh, KETU Television, 5'7 is tall, by the way. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I don't want to rush you, but I know you've already thought about it. Um, what do you think you can improve even more going forward after winning this award? I mean, I think I got a lot of areas I can improve on. Um, I don't get to the free throw line much. And I don't know if that's um, me not drawing fouls or, or just being a young player in this league and not having the respect yet. But. I'll get there um, defensively. I'm still a work in progress. I got to get better uh, off the ball. Obviously, you're watching the series. You can see I got to get better at, at guarding, you know, pin downs, flares, all those things. And I will continue to get better because I'm a guy who recognizes something and, and then I kind of attack it. I understand that I got to get better in, in pick and roll coverages because that's the NBA. It's all about pick and roll isolation situations and being able to guard, you know, under 14 in the shot clock. So. Defensively, offensively, being able to draw fouls, being more efficient in movements, um, off pin downs and flares, and offensively when I have the ball, being able to get shots quicker with less dribbles. I like to dribble a lot out of habit to kind of, you know, survey the court and just it's a comfort thing having the ball and being able to dribble. But got to be more efficient. Just watching Dirk, you know, he leads the NBA in catch and shoot. Uh, he's very efficient. You know, he catches the ball. He makes a move. If he, if he has his back to the basket, he's reverse pivoting and getting his shot off quicker. So. You know, I, I got more of an old man style game now. I gotta kind of, you know, put that all out there. This will be the last question, Jace. Go ahead. CJ, can you elaborate more on on what your brother means to you, and if there's any scene or conversation that that kind of comes to mind on a moment like today? Um, man, he means a lot. Uh, we've been through a lot together. Uh, he went to a D two NAI school in Goshen College, Goshen, Indiana, 
and we basically play one on one every day. You know, worked out together. Uh, even to this day, we talk. Like he texted me this morning, congrats, all that stuff. Um, I'm about to cry. <laughs> uh, he means a lot. He does a lot for me. We've done a lot for each other, and uh, I'm just thankful to have him in my life. At this time, CJ will make his way over to the uh, just outside around the corner. CJ is the 2016 Kia Sorento, where he will present the keys to, I know I saw Aaron Hubert here. I saw Tracy Rose here. And from the Boys and Girls Clubs of Portland, this organization has clubs in underserved communities that are uniquely equipped to provide enrichment programs to young people while empowering them with a sense of belonging and security. Their goal is to see these boys and girls reach their full potential as productive, caring, responsible citizens. So today, CJ joins Kawhi Leonard and Jamal Crawford as winners of this year's Kia Performance Awards. In the days ahead, two more outstanding players will be honored with the Kia NBA Rookie of the Year and the Kia Most Valuable Player Awards. And of course, the NBA playoffs continue where every game can be seen on TNT, ABC, ESPN, or NBA TV. The Trailblazers, tomorrow night taking on the L.A. Clippers in Game 3 from the Moda Center, that game on ESPN. Congratulations to C.J. McCollum, the Kia NBA Most Improved Player. I'm Mike Barrett from Portland. Thanks for joining us today.